When the dust settles after an era of players retire, only the absolute greatest are immortalized and retain incredible card values. So we're getting out our crystal balls to determine which players from this era will withstand the test of time. We're sharing those predictions today on Cards on the Table. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Cards on the Table, our fast-paced talk show where we discuss a wide variety of topics from the world of sports cards. My name is Tyler Nethercott, better known as Teapot, back with Ben and Doug one last time in the captain seat before Jeff oh, resumes. You, you skunked me again. I think so, unless they just decide to let me stay here, which I'd be fine with. We've got some great topics, as usual. We're looking at uh, which NFL players we might be high on this upcoming season, which Panini products would we like to see last forever. But our first topic... This is a fun one. We're getting out our crystal balls. We're trying to look into the future, 50 years into the future, Doug and Ben. And we're trying to figure out which player amongst everybody right now, all sports, do you think will be the most remembered from right now, 50 years from now? I'm going to start with you, Ben. Well, I mean, I wanted to make an old joke about Doug and say he was going to be alive by then. So. Oh, man. Just Ooh. cutting right to it. <laughs> yeah. Painful. Well, to be, to be honest, I think there's one sort of low-hanging fruit here, and it's Otani. Yeah. Um, I think he's he's just been unbelievable as a pitcher. He's been unbelievable as a batter. Yeah. Um, I think when you look at what he's done so far, I think worst-case scenario is he is a generational talent that yeah. we haven't seen in decades since Babe Ruth. Yeah, or ever. That, yeah, you know, or ever. Best-case scenario is... Maybe he sort of pulls a Steph Curry and completely revolutionizes the way that we view this sport. Steph completely changed how basketball is played. Maybe Otani is going to be a guy where we start seeing more sort of dual position players. You have a yeah. batter yeah. Um, and a pitcher at the same yeah. time. We haven't seen that in, for, in, in so, so long. Um, but outside of that, I think we can look at some guys like Max Verstappen, who is absolutely nobody unbe- knows <laughs> absolutely unbelievable um he set up he set up to win potentially yeah. for years and years and years um and then when i think of guys like this i think about the the overall international global appeal maybe somebody like mbappe is able to pull that off it's it's tough hmm. it's really tough but um i think those guys have a chance but the low-hanging fruit is definitely otani mbappe didn't set the epl goal for scoring he mm-hmm. did not do that i love mbappe and I think, you know, you're right there. I think there was a college player who was just drafted, baseball, who may be a dual threat too. I couldn't tell you his name because I don't follow it that closely, but I, I know there was a pitcher who just absolutely rakes at the plate too. So we'll see if they change the trend. Doug, do you have any uh, predictions on this? Well, since according to Ben, I'm not going to live long enough to be wrong, I can just say whatever okay. I want. Well, you're going to be like 100 years. It's you're going to be 100 years yeah. old by the time. Yeah, yeah the answer is Will Levis, obviously. Um, yeah, so I can just say whatever. But... I really don't have a great answer. I mean, the, the layup is Otani, right? Yeah. That, that, that seems to be the obvious one. But if the parameters set are just in the last five years, then, you know, we can't look at a guy like Mahomes in 2017. That he's just oh, outside. I think, I think the that's fair. He's, he's I, playing now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like a guy like Mahomes or a guy like Mbappe would come to mind, but they're yeah. just, you know, on that edge of the five-year parameter that we're talking about here. But I think the most eye-opening part of this question is examining just how hard this is to predict. Um, we can sit here and we can talk about all of the guys that are probably the best rookies in their pers- prospective sports over the past five years, Luka Doncic, Joe Burrow, whoever, whoever your guy is, but that could all change next year. Yeah. Anything could happen to these yeah, guys so next year, five years, ten years down the road. Yeah. It's, a, it's an incredibly hard thing to prospect, um, you know, and it's not just things like injury. It yeah. could be personal controversies. It could be poor team management, never getting you know that kind of career success that you might need. The problem with Otani. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a perfect example. He may never play for a contender. We don't know. Um, so you know, this is just an impossible question to answer, to be honest. And that just highlights how hard it is to do modern sports yeah. card prospecting if you're looking at super long term goats. I do think that Otani is the logical choice right now, and I don't think that's recency bias. I think that's actually no, just true. Right. It's interesting. We know that the best over time, only the best, are the ones that carry the long-term value. You mentioned Babe Ruth. Another guy like Ty Cobb comes to mind, right? And then when you start going down, even to other players, Tris Speaker, Rogers Hornsby, let alone a guy like Duke uh, Duke Snyder or Roy Campanella, these are top 50 to top 100 baseball players of all time, like really good players. But 
we're 100 years removed, 50 years removed, et cetera. Mm -hmm. People don't know who those guys are. So when you're looking 50 years out, I think there has to be something very unique and unicorn-ish about that player. Otani's 29. He's later in his career than what any of us would hope because he came from Japan like Ichiro did. Uh, you know, it'll be really interesting to see how his career plays out. I hope he can give another really strong 10 to 12 years, even if that just means he's hitting later in his career. Yeah. Um, I'm rooting for the guy, and I think he's a phenom. Okay, switching gears over to Pristine Auction. Remember, use code SCI when you register for Pristine Auction, and you will receive $10 off of your first purchase. Doug, what do you got your eye on this week at Pristine? I'm looking at a 2015 National Treasure Steph Curry auto out of 25, but what makes this unique is it's there's an inscription that says Baby-Faced Assassin Ooh. written by Steph on there. Nice. Okay. I've gotten really kind of into inscri inscribed autos yeah. recently, and that one stood out to me. Very cool. It's a nice touch. What about you, sir? Speaking of guys that you know are going to make a difference 50 years from now, 1956 Topps, Mickey Mantle, uh, PSA 2, great-looking card, really good eye appeal even though it's not a super high grade. Awesome. I've got my eye on a 2012 Prism Hobby Box case of basketball. Ooh, that's a Jeff answer. That's a bunch yeah. of Box of expensive boxes. fancy cardboard inside of cardboard inside of cardboard. It's a fantastic choice. I'm really excited to see what that's going to go for. I think, obviously, that's a pretty good long-term investment play if you're into that. So, again, head over to pristineauction.com, use code SCI, and register for $10 off on your first purchase. Okay. Football season is almost here. It's right around the corner. It'll be here before we know it. Preseason's coming. I did a video this last weekend just looking at all the quarterbacks, kind of took all the, the, the viable starters, put them into our price movements, looked at where their prices have been for the last six months, and tried to kind of just break down, give my thoughts, my personal opinions. Everybody's free to disagree and kind of weighed in on some of those, as well as some guys who I think might have potential. Who do you think, Doug, has potential coming into the season? So this is really interesting because in years past, the National is next week. And that's yeah. always been kind of the, the unofficial start of yeah. football yeah. Uh, market heating up, right? But this offseason was a really strong offseason for the top recent quarterbacks. Mm. I think we saw less of a dip than we normally do for quarterbacks in the last three or four years, um, in my opinion, at least the guys that I've been tracking. And what I think is interesting about that is that that probably means there's not going to be as much growth once the season actually starts. Mm -hmm. There's actually probably more opportunity to see guys like Trevor Lawrence, Joe Burrow, and, and Herbert go down than go up. Interesting. Um, okay. You know, and, and a guy like the, I think that you were down on in, in um, Justin the, Fields. Phil Fields, yeah. thank you so much. Uh, that's a guy that I like, but everybody else already likes him yeah. too. Yeah. So I, I just don't see how he can sustain either. Yeah. So for me, I think you've got to look outside of the quarterbacks and hope that we finally start seeing some more love given to st skill yeah. position players. There's a lot of co running backs that I really like. I like Kenneth Walker Jr. to have a really big year. I think yeah. Alexander Madison set up for a big year, but the hobby doesn't love running backs because they're shelf life. Yeah. So uh, it's, it's, a, it's a difficult proposition, but yeah. you know, I'm really hoping to see some, some wide receivers and maybe even some dis defensive stars get some love. Yeah, one thing's for certain football is very very unpredictable yeah you, i always go into the season in my fantasy drafts like i know what's going to happen this year it's obvious and then it's not at all what happens so i'm definitely going to be wrong about some things ben what are you going to be wrong about <laughs> most things i mean looking at this uh, you know i i pulled up market movers was was looking at some of the top qbs and it's just a mess man it's lots of guys that you know it, it's trying to find the right area where people can be successful but also the card prices haven't haven't hit that yet we look at a guy like even brock purdy yep. he's down a bunch but down. his prices are still super high yep. relative to you know what they actually should be we look at him championship level team but how much growth potential yep. does he still have yeah you know other guys like i mean do you want to bet on tua who one more concussion could potentially end that dude's career yep Right, Joe Burrow, expensive. Justin Herbert, expensive. Um, of the young guys, I'm really scared that you know we've we've talked about this before. That really the the second year group of QBs, Kenny Pickett, Malik Willis, like uh, Desmond Ritter. I'm not super enthusiastic about any of those guys. Yeah. Um, the the guy I will say that I think people are still a little down on that has some room for growth. Lamar Jackson, dude is an NFL MVP. Yeah. Um, Ravens have struggled the last couple of years, yeah. but he's a guy that when you look at can they win an MVP, can they win a Super Bowl, that's what it's taking for, for some of these QBs yep. to actually see really good, really good price growth. 
He's done one of those things. I don't think they're going to win a Super Bowl, yeah. but he's capable of hitting one of the benchmarks that actually gets significant price growth. So little spoiler teaser of this upcoming Saturday, I've got a video and I'm talking about whether or not championships should matter as much as they do in some of these sports. And it's interesting because when you stack up the top five, top six, seven quarterbacks, Mahomes sits squarely at yeah. the top with championships and the rest of these guys, it's like their prices are going to do this over the next few years or, or just sure. like this if they don't win. Yeah, we've, had, Allen, we've had a similar Burrow, conversation Herbert. on the show before. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So if you want to show off all of your quarterback cards or other football cards, you absolutely need stand-up displays. All right, guys, head over to standupdisplays.co. Use promo code SCI to save 15% off your entire order and get your cards on display. That's what they're meant for. Now we're going to our mailbag. This is the topics that you su submit to all of us in the comments. We review those, and we love to have these topics. And our first one is an interesting one, a timely one. We've got the National coming up next week. It's in Chicago. And some people are asking, after an abysmal, horrible experience in the greater Atlantic City area last Shocking. year, <laughs> Good facility, terrible everything else. Some people are asking, why not just have it in Chicago every year? Doug, you were in Chicago two years ago when we were there. That was my first national. Do you like it in Chicago? Do you think it should stay there? What are your thoughts on this? Yeah, so first of all, really good week of mailbag questions, so appreciate it. Keep those coming. Um, I'm not really prepared to anoint Chicago permanent host. Yeah. I've only been to one national in Chicago, so my sample size is literally one. Yep. Maybe my opinion will develop a little bit more um, after next week. There are some definite positives to it. It's relatively co close to uh, the airport. Yeah. Lodging is fine. Uh, restaurant options are mediocre, I guess. I mean, th these are things you have to consider outside of just the actual venue. Yeah. Do you have space for it? Okay, great. But then everything yeah. else that goes around Kind of it. centrally located-ish. Yeah. So for me, the answer is pretty simple, and it's the same for any type of large convention. It's Las Vegas. Hmm. For me, moving to Las Vegas, there's endless amounts of, of lodging, endless amounts of food options, endless amounts of entertainment. I can sell all of my cards at the National. Then I can take all that money to the blackjack table, hey, it? double it, uh, and then go back to the National and come back with twice as many cards as I had hmm. before. Hmm. It's not the story. Free money. We've heard free money. Hashtag free money. Fair. Do you think it should be in Vegas? Should it be in Chicago? I'm not a Vegas guy personally. I know that everybody will probably hate on me for that. What do you think? So I don't mind. I, I like Vegas, but the thing that I'm worried about is do we really want to be going to a convention at the beginning of August in Las Vegas where we're just going to melt? That's true. Right? I mean, it's not like Chicago is... is uh, super beautiful, you know. It was, I think, pretty point. humid. You're in a you building know. all day, so. Uh, well, I mean, people like to ex people like to go outside. You don't hot. even really have to go outside <laughs> in Vegas. You can stay in whatever giant. And it's a desert. By the yeah. time the sun goes down, it's cool again. Yeah, um, you know, I sort. I, I do like it being in Chicago, just from uh, a geographical standpoint. Yeah. Yeah. But I also empathize with uh, the organizers because this is. So, you have to think of this almost like a Super Bowl, in the in yeah. the sense of. Uh, like I, I've specifically asked them about this. There ha there's, there's only so many venues that can hold this amount of people. Yep. Then you have to narrow it down by it has to be available during this time of year. Yeah. And then I know something that they prioritize is it needs to be on one floor. Yeah. And so all of a sudden, when you get to the beginning of You've August, so many choices. Yeah, it's, it's something like five, mm. right? And so that's why we see it bounce around between only a few places. I think I'd still like to see it bounce around. I don't want it in Chicago indefinitely. Now, I'd rather be, I'd rather, you know, next year it's in like, Cleveland. Cin yeah, Cleveland. it's in Cleveland. Let's do a nice city like Cincinnati or something like that. It's right there. You know, there, there's some other places if we want to stick in the Midwest. It's been in St. Louis before, um, you know, maybe Indianapolis or something like that. It's been in Atlanta before. That's where but just like Las Vegas, I don't want my friends to melt. Yeah. Atlanta is under summer. consideration no. for 2026. I think, I think Atlanta is where it needs to be. So I don't have to travel. I can stay right here. I love when Culture Collision is here. Yeah, Shout out true. to that crew. Uh, look, Atlantic City was not That great. was the worst. It was expensive. Anybody, never, it was, never again. Anybody was that's dangerous. lived in the Northeast yeah. was like, It ah. took me three hours to get checked into my room, and then my hotel key never worked. Just terrible situations. I've got horror stories. Find me at the National this year, and I'll tell you about last year's. 
That does it for that topic. We're over time. Second question. This is one, you know, we've talked about this topic in the past. The rumors continue to circulate. Everybody's wondering what's going to happen to Panini between now and the next couple of years. If Fanatics were to take over Panini and you could only choose, they were only going to choose one product brand to preserve from Panini, what would you want to see it be, Ben? So We might all say the same thing. So my, my instinct here is to ask myself, what does Tops not do very well right now? Okay. And it's inserts. And then I start to reverse engineer that and I think, okay, what are the really good insert sets that come with Panini products? Some of my favorite are in Donruss, Optic, but that tier of product is already pretty oversaturated yeah. with, uh, with, you know, I, I don't think we need Donruss alongside Top Series 1 and Top Series 2, mm. right? If they're reviving Topps Chrome, do we need Optic? Seems a little redundant. So I'm going to go with a product because I know Doug is probably going to take the one I actually want to say. Yep. We'll see if he does. I'm going to go with one and one I think that's sort of a really nice product that isn't ultra high end, but is, sort, is, is fairly expensive. Design, absolutely crisp. Or you'd have to go with something like, you, you can't just let Flawless die, right? You can't right. let National Treasures die. Upper Deck Exquisite die. died. Um, it, it did, but a lot of stuff with Upper Deck did, yeah. um, you know, and so I, I think it's got to be something in, in that tier. The low end stuff, I think they've, they've got handled. Maybe something like Chronicles. I don't know if you want to fill that specific need. I know you hate Chronicles, but <laughs> you stink, so. I'm going to jump across the table at you. All right, Doug, tell us why Court King should stick around. <laughs> I, that's exactly what I was going to say. I didn't know I could only pick one. I've got 17 oh, different okay. products. Well, get, yeah, let it, let um, it rip. So yeah, so this is really tricky. When I think of the like the mainstays, for me, when I think of Panini, the core three brands are going to be Prism, Select, and Optic. Yep. And then I think of High End, I think of National Treasures, and I think of Flawless. Mm. And I was thinking along the same lines as Ben is that, one, inserts are a problem. So we've got to think uh, uh, along those lines. And we also know that Tops doesn't typically do High End super well. So that's why I thought of, you know. I kind of disagree. Mm, I like a lot of tops. They, they haven't nicheized high end. I don't think that's a word, but like you got Flawless and NT, like you said, yeah. they've got a lot of different yeah. high end products. So anyway. So out of those five, if I had to pick one, honestly, I'm picking Optic. And there's one reason it's the rated rookie logo. I, yeah. That I, I would I would be heartbroken if I lost the rated rookie logo. I, that, that is the most nostalgic just piece of, cardboard I can think of for me yeah. going back to the late 80s. Yeah. So, you know, if i got to pick one, that's it. Uh, because there's Chrome and Optic is close to Chrome, maybe yeah. what I'd say is in, do rated rookie inserts as part of Topps Chrome somehow or something if they're going to preserve it. i go Court Kings because I love it. I also would probably go Prism or I might just say make Select great again and keep Select but make it great again. If it were old Select, yeah, I'm with Ben's it. over here assuming that the designers of the inserts today come with the product when you keep it. I don't know if that would happen. Right. Another dark horse candidate that I'd love to see, Noir. Yeah, literally, dark horse uh, Noir. Yeah, there you go. That does it for today's show. We are completely over time and out of time. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to check out stand-up displays as well as pristine auction, market movers, SCI app, all of our great product offerings. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, happy investing. Keep on collecting and make sure to have fun.